Hi, I'm Justin Kay, Field Specialist in Horticulture for University of Missouri Extension. Hi, I'm Juan Cabrera, and I'm also a Field Specialist in Horticulture for University of Missouri Extension. We're going to talk today about prevention and management of drift events. The best way to prevent a drift event is to talk to your neighbors. It's much easier to have a conversation prior to a drift event than it is after. Talk to your neighboring crop producers, let them know your intention of growing specialty crops in the area and that your crops are sensitive to herbicide drift. You can register your specialty crop fields with driftwatch.org. Driftwatch mapping informs the pesticide applicators of the presence of specialty crops in a given area. Your neighbors and neighboring pesticide applicators can register with Field Check in order to access the information in the maps and the database showing specialty crops in their area. You can use high visibility signage at fields bordering row crops, such as in the image below. And on farm weather stations can be helpful to document wind and temperature conditions in the growing season. On farm weather stations are available with data logging software so that you can track the weather on the farm, in the field, at the day of potential drift event. It's important to be able to recognize the signs of drift. The upward curling, puckering, and twisting of leaves is indicative of 2,4-D or dicamba drift. You might also recognize twisting, bending, or elongation of stems and leaf petioles. It's also important to recognize that physiological leaf roll, which is a result of excessive wind and drought stress, may in some ways mirror herbicide drift, but is a separate issue that's physiological and weather-based. So in the latest news, the EPA approved the dicamba label from 2021 to 2025. However, there are some label changes to this new registration. The first one that you need to be aware of is that the downwind buffer has increased to 240 feet. And if you're in a county that has endangered species, this buffer increased to 310 feet. Over the top, applications of dicamba in soybeans are prohibited after June 30th. And over the top application of the product on cotton is prohibited after July 30th. So that means that you're most likely to see dicamba damage during the first half of the summer. Now, if you suspect that you have had dicamba drift damage in your crops, it is important for you to take the proper documentation. Take pictures and videos of the damage and make sure you're using a handheld standalone camera that you set up the date of that camera so that it shows the proper date where you're taking those pictures and those videos. You have to write down in a piece of paper what were the weather conditions during the suspected drift events, such as the temperature, relative humidity, and the wind speed. Draw field maps or use Google Maps to document an impacted area in areas that are likely sources of drift, and record the crops present in your field and the field where drift emerged, as well as the name of the farmers where the drift likely originated. Keep purchase and sales invoices to document investment and revenue from affected crops. And you have to report these to the Missouri Department of Agriculture. And the first thing that you have to do is you go to their website and then they have a search box where you can type in pesticide incident report or in your web browser, you put Missouri Department of Agriculture pesticide incident report. You can also contact the Bureau of Pesticide Control at 573-751-5504. After you submit a report, they should contact you back to ask you more questions about it.